Hey guys, welcome to Raw Customs. I'm your host, Patrick Rocolo, and this is Prop Tips. So guys, I get quite a few questions on how to build props, like how to bevel an edge, what tools to use, what foam to use. So to help you guys out, I'm going to start making short videos focused on just individual tasks on building a prop. So if you have a question, go ahead and ask it down in the comment area below. And I'll try to make a video not only to help you out, but to help others who have the same question. On this Prop Tips, I'm going to be showing you how to use the templates that I designed. And to get you started, I have a free download for a Captain America mask that I designed. If you're interested in that, you can head down to the description area below where you'll find a link. For now, let's get to work. When you download the templates, you'll find that they have been compressed into a ROAR file and will need to be extracted. If you don't have it already, you can go online and download WinRoar. You can download the free version to extract the files. Once you've downloaded and installed the software, I recommend creating a new folder and then moving the compressed files into the folder you created. Next, right click on the file, go down to extract here, and then click on that. This will open up all your pages in a PDF format. If you don't have a program to view PDFs, you can go online and download Inkscape. This is a free software that will allow you to view and print the files. Once you've opened up Inkscape, you can go up to the top left corner and click on File, go down to Open, then go to the folder that you created. Once you've opened up your folder, click on Page 1 and then hit Open. You'll have another window open up with your photo, just click OK and your page will be loaded into Inkscape. The page should open up in an eight and a half by 11 page size. You can double check this by going up to file, down to document properties and opening that window. If you go down to the custom size section, over on the right, you can change the unit to inches. It should read 8.5 by 11. In the section above, you can change your page size if needed. The remaining pages will need to be imported. You'll want to go back up to the file and down to import, find the folder that you created, and open page 2. Inkscape will only let you import one page at a time, so you'll need to go back and import each page separately. I recommend importing all of your pages, particularly if you're planning on rescaling the templates. Once you have your pages imported, you will be able to move them separately. If you're planning on scaling your templates, I recommend grouping your pages. You can do this by selecting all of your pages by drawing a bounding box around all of them. With all your pages selected, you can head up to the top and click on Object, drop down to Group, and all your pages will be joined together. Next, you'll want to go to the lock icon and click on it. This will allow you to scale the height and width as one. To help you scale, you can draw a rectangle at the top. The bar can then be grouped with your templates. Then the page can be moved up next to the ruler at the top. In the document properties, you can go and change the ruler to inches. And once you're done scaling your pages, you'll want to go back up to object and down to ungroup and ungroup your bar. You may have to hit ungroup a second time to ungroup your pages. This is just a quick overview on scaling. If you need more help with scaling, I recommend watching my how to scale templates video. When you're ready to print, you'll need to move whichever page 
needs to be printed inside your page box. Whatever's inside your border will be printed. Everything on the outside will not print. Down in the description area below, you'll find a link to a Captain America mask. This is a free download. This is on a single page and will not need to be extracted. You'll just need to download it and open the file. Once you have your page open, you'll want to go up to File, down to Print, select your printer, and then hit Print. To trace out your templates, you'll need markers or a pencil and a razor knife to cut it out. Once you print out the templates, you'll have three colors. The black lines identify the areas that need to be completely cut out. The green identifies your reference lines. These lines are not meant to be cut, only marked with a marker or a pencil. The red lines are your detail lines where you'll make shallow cuts with a razor, but not cut all the way through. To get started, you'll need to cut out all your template pieces. Start by cutting out the black lines. I like to use a razor to do this, but you could also use scissors to cut out the outside edges. Majority of the time on the templates or kits, you do have a left and right side. This means you'll have pieces that are the same, and usually they're just a mirror of each other. So instead of cutting out the template twice, you can use the same template just by flipping it over and tracing the opposite side. Now as far as small circles go, instead of trying to cut them out with a knife, I recommend using a hole punch. In this case, this is ideal because there's an open hole that allows you to line up the circle on the template. Now as far as this mask is concerned, I am using 3mm foam. But you can use whatever you need. You can use 1, 2, 3, or 5, or a combination of them. Once you have all your pieces cut out, I recommend laying them out on the foam. This allows you to figure out the best way to lay it out and save more material. Once you're happy with your placement, you can use some tape to hold your template in place. Then you'll want to trace around all your black edges. Now you can use markers, pencils, pens, whatever you're comfortable with to trace out your pattern. To help illustrate everything, I am using colored markers to match the color of the line that I'm cutting out. Once I've marked the black lines on the foam, I will remove the template and cut out the next color. In this case, I'm going to cut out the green reference lines on one end. Since the pattern's the same on both sides, once I trace one side, I'll just flip the template over to trace the opposite side.
Once that line's cut out, I'll lay the pattern back in place and then trace out the reference line. On the templates, I like to cut out a section at a time. You may prefer to cut everything out. This is just the way I like to do it. Next, I'll cut out the red lines. On this piece, it allows me to cut out the bottom section. With the main piece cut out, I can lay it in place and then trace out the top edge. With the top edge marked, the template can be removed and then one side cut off, then put back in place and marked. Once all your lines are marked, you can cut out your piece. The black lines should be completely cut out. On the red lines, you're just going to make a score cut. This means you're going to take your razor and make a very shallow cut. I recommend taking scrap foam and making practice cuts before you cut into your main project. Once you've made the cuts, heat the section with the heat gun. This will open up the lines that you cut so you can see the results. I recommend making test cuts on every project because your blades will dull and the density of the foam will change and that will make a big difference in your cuts. Once you've made all your practice cuts, you can cut your detail lines into the main project. Once you're done making your cuts, hold off on using the heat gun. You'll be heat forming it at the end and that will open up your cuts. To make the detailed lines for the circles, you just need something small, round, and hollow. In this case, I took an ink pen apart, and it just happens to be the right size for the circles. To cut the circles, you can just apply a little pressure and spin the pen.
Now you can line up the pin to the template and make your cut or go ahead and, and make your red marks, remove your template and then make your cut. Both ways work so it's just what you prefer. Once your pieces are cut out, you can clean up your edges using a rotary tool with a grinding stone. So at this point, you have your black lines cut out, your red lines have your details cut in, and now the green lines will help you line up your pieces. Now to glue your pieces together, I recommend using contact cement. I use weld wood because it's easy to find, it's sold at Lowe's, Home Depot, and Walmart. So to start, apply glue to the top surface area of your main piece inside your reference lines and to the bottom surface area of your overlays. Once you've applied your glue, you'll want to give it time to set up. This generally takes around five minutes. The time will vary depending on the temperature. But once the shine's gone, your pieces are ready to glue together. Now that the glue set, you can line your pieces up and press them together. With all your pieces glued together, you can use a rotary tool to clean up all your edges and seams. Next, you'll want to take your heat gun and heat your piece on both sides. Since this is a double piece, it'll take a little bit longer to get the whole piece heated up. Since you're heating the piece, the glue may separate. If this happens, just press your pieces back together. With the foam still hot, you'll want to form and mold your mask. I recommend using a mannequin head to do this. Start by shaping the nose area and then moving up to the forehead, and then bend down the sides. Since you have multiple bends going on this piece, it would help if you had somebody help you. It's always nice to have a second pair of hands. Once you have it shaped, you'll want to hold the foam until it cools. Now if you don't have a mannequin head, you can use your own face, just make sure the foam is not too hot. You can get the foam hot enough to burn you. So if you're going to use your face, you might want to use a thin towel in between your face and the foam when you form it. At this point, the mask can be sealed and painted. If you're interested in learning that, you can check out pretty much any of my other prop videos. To finish everything off, you're going to need a strap. I recommend just using some elastic. This is just a matter of running it through the holes on the side, adjusting the size, and then gluing the ends together. <laughs> 